Today on OC News, we learn more about a new California bill that could prevent all vape sales to all born after 2007. Also, San Bernardino County declared state of emergency over winter storms. And NASCAR reduces the size of the auto club speedway and sells surrounding property. All of this and more coming up next in OC News. This just in. Now in tech news, the first responder on the scene. Oh, mo- There's been a lot of collaborative efforts over the years. I blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast, Broadcast Journalism Students at Cal State Fullerton. Thank you, Sam. Wow, because it's happening. Video Miami. OC News starts right now. Thank you for joining us here at OC News. I'm Brian Pineda. And I'm Andres Webster. OC News is brought to you by the Journalism Students here at Cal State Fullerton. Last year, California voters passed Prop 31 to uphold a 2020 law that banned the sale of most flavored tobacco products. What effect has that had on vape shops? Heather Solis looked into it. According to public health research, about 3.6 million people report using one or more tobacco products. There are also over 22,000 vape shops in California. Prop 31 has decreased some business sales for smoke shops, just like this one located in East Los Angeles, with me is Juan Cortez. Business has been uh, a lot slower, you know, because um, obviously when you're adapting to what was legal, which was a lot of vapes, a lot of juices, and what were, what were majority real um, um, popular. And all of a sudden, well, a couple a year later or two, well, my business anyways, they banned everything, so it, it hit pretty hard, you know. And so you try to accommodate with the no different products, but obviously they did not sell the same. California Assemblyman Damon Colley is taking it a step further, creating a bill, AB 935, that aims to prohibit the sale of tobacco products to those born on or after January 1st, 2007. I think it's reasonable because a lot of young people these days, like, they're starting to use drugs a lot. And also, like, at school, I see a lot of people, like, smoking and stuff in the restroom. So I think it's reasonable. According to the bill, tobacco products like cigarettes, cigars, chewing tobacco, pipe tobacco, and vapid liquids would all be banned. Honestly, it it really depends on the person. So I'm uh, I'm not really for it. So I would, I would be actually against it, if anything, if the thing goes or passes by. The Independent Legislative Analyst Office SMA that Proposition 31 could reduce state tobacco tax revenues by up to $100 million annually. For OC News, I'm Heather Solis. In other news, recently, Huntington Beach City Council created a new city ordinance that limits the types of flags that can be flown on city property. This in turn makes it illegal to fly gay pride flags on city property. Our reporter Robert Rodriguez is in Huntington Beach with more on this story. Normally flags can be seen flying next to the pier, yet no flags, not even the American or the California flag, are flying. But on Tuesday, February 14th, Huntington Beach City Council established a new ordinance that would ban gay pride flags on city property. Under the new city guidelines, only uh, can city buildings fly American armed forces and state flags. But what does that mean for the gay pride flag? Currently, most of the city's buildings around Huntington Beach are no longer flying any flags, with the new ordinance being established since not all feel the same way about the new ordinance. We talked to a couple of residents of Huntington Beach to see their opinion. It doesn't affect me too much. I don't I don't see I don't see a reason why they did that. It doesn't really doesn't really matter too much to me personally, though. Um, I just don't understand why they would do something like that. Just doesn't seem right. But. Like I said, it just doesn't really matter too much to me personally. But not everyone feels the same way. We talked to another local resident and local teacher to see how she felt about the situation. I'm very disappointed that there would ever be an ordinance that would give an idea that anybody is not in support of the LGBT community. I would like to think that all of our government agencies and all of our neighbors and our whole community would be in support of the LGBT community. There's no word on if the city council will recall this, but so far no flags have flown at all on any city property. In Huntington Beach, I'm Robert Rodriguez, OC News. Coming up next, Wendell and Miller with a compelling story in regards to the shooting at the UCA apartments. Let's take a look. So I was downstairs at the gym at the time with my roommate and I was on the treadmill and basically I just heard some like gunshots and I didn't know if it was from like my music or not 
and then I took out my earbuds and it was like from outside and like we were just like in a panic after that and we didn't really know what to do. I didn't know if I was supposed to like hide or like call the cops. So it was a very such scary like situation. So I actually don't even live at the apartments. I was studying with a friend that lives here while it happened. Um, we were just doing our homework and then all of a sudden we just heard like these pops going off and we were really confused because neither of us knew what like a real gunshot sounded like and then later on we saw the reports that there were shots fired and then that's when we realized like somebody was shooting at the apartment. On Monday night, the Fullerton Police Department received a call about gunshots fired at the UCA Apartments, which is located right across the Cal State Fullerton Nutwood parking structure. The call was made late at night from a man that was getting shot at. The Fullerton Police said there were 16 bullet castings at the apartment complex, but there were no injuries reported. The authorities are still trying to figure out the reasoning behind the shooting and the identity of the victim and the shooter. Signing off with OC News, this is Gwendolyn Miller. Stay safe, Titans. San Bernardino County declared a state of emergency over winter storm, stranding residents in their homes. In the Lake Arrowhead area, residents are trapped as roads have become undrivable. Many aren't even able to make it to a grocery store to grab essentials. According to officials, over 100 rescues have been taking place since the start of the storm. Highway 18 is currently closed as Cowchon tries to clear the roads. With the closure, many residents are left stranded in their homes. Some are left down the mountain with no way to get home. Big Bear City Mayor Erickson says right now our focus is providing public safety access. So this is making sure the roads are clear for emergency personnel and our lifelines that are coming up. We are continuing to facilitate food and fuel deliveries in conjunction with CHP, County Trans and the Sheriff's Department. Another store is expected to touch down, bringing one to two feet of snow. As of now, there is still no official estimate for when mountain highways will be available. Coming up, Vanessa Bryan settles a multi-million dollar lawsuit with Los Angeles County over graphic crash photos. And a big renovation project at Auto Club Speedway that will take it out of the NASCAR schedule for quite a while. Those stories and more after the break. LA County is expected to pay millions of dollars to Kobe Bryant's family. Vanessa Bryant to receive a, almost $30 million in a settlement against LA County. The settlement occurred just three years after the fatal crashes that killed Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. Bryant was suing over the graphic photos that were released to the public to, of the helicopter crash. The settlement does include $50 million awarded by a jury last summer, so Bryant will also be getting an additional $14 million for any other claims. A jury determined that the Los Angeles County Fire Sheriff's Department violated Brian's right to privacy by using the gruesome photos as souvenirs. I had the opportunity to visit Anaheim's oldest park, just a couple miles north of Disneyland. Last year, Pearson Park added a very special basketball court. Take a look. Dream Court was unveiled in May of 2022. The artwork includes tiles in royal, purple and gold, butterflies are inscribed with the names of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. The court honors their lives lost too soon. So this is a collaboration with Nancy Lieberman, who is a women's basketball pioneer. She reached out to the city and to see if we can establish this court here. 
Although Kobe Bryant will be forever remembered as a Lakers figure, here in the city of Anaheim, a new basketball court and a new mural in tribute to him have been well received by community members. At least for me, I've been to this park uh, a lot of times, so having something of Kobe here is pretty special, knowing that this is the first basketball court that's been here and that's ever built here, so um, it, it's pretty special. It brings everyone together and knowing that like the murals right here, it's, it's pretty special. Dream Court is more than just a couple of hoops and some painted white lines. Through Dream Court, Kobe's lasting legacy on and off the court continues to impact many individuals. But seeing people who are clearly not from the area come here to enjoy the court has been wonderful. They're here, they come with their uh, Kobe jersey. It has been inspiring to see people love our community just as much as we do. Dream Court is a small glimpse of the legacy Kobe and Gigi left behind. Pearson Park will be a place that will continue to inspire the community and visitors who celebrate their lives. From Anaheim, I'm Brian Pineda reporting for OC News. NASCAR returned to the Two Mile Auto Club Speedway this weekend for the final time as they're scaling down to a half mile track. Here's Pedro Gonzalez at the track with the latest update. The Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California hosted its last race on its current two mile configuration last weekend as it is moving to a shorter configuration. Most of the property was sold to San Bernardino County over the weekend making the move imminent. Fans like Justin Lamb are sticking through it all despite the beloved track's changes. It's, it's really sad I've been coming here since 2016. Uh, first race here, Jimmy Johnson won. So ever since then I've called it my SoCal home and uh, I love it a lot here. It doesn't matter, it didn't matter how bad the race was or how good it was, it's just a great time out here. And After this weekend's events and after 26 years of memories made here at the Auto Club Speedway, the checkered flag will be made for this current configuration of the Speedway. Auto Club is a unique track on NASCAR's schedule as it's only one of two current two-mile tracks they race at. Ever since its first race in 1997, the track has been a hit. Drivers like J.J. Yaley and Kaz Gallis speak out their experiences on the track. I don't know, it's interesting. Obviously, it's been swirling around for a couple years now that they were going to try to do a Bristol-type racetrack here. Uh, I think there's still a lot of question of what's going to happen here, but... Uh, you know, it's it's always been fun. Uh, it's always been a race that you look forward to coming to uh, at the beginning of the season. Uh, well, I love this track. This is probably one of my favorite tracks, actually. Um, I'm sad to see it reconfigured, but I'm sure whatever they come up with will be fun, too. Um, but I'm with his last laps ran, the new project will start as NASCAR looks to have the track ready by the 2025 season. From Fontana, California, this is Pedro Gonzalez from OC News. Looking into sports now. Baseball season is right around the corner, but with some new rules in place. Here's Bryce with more on that. Right you are, Brian. Spring training is in full swing, meaning opening day is only a few weeks away. But as all 30 MLB clubs have reported to their respective camps, some new additions have tagged along for the ride. Larger bases have been added to the diamond to help keep base runners and infielders safe. But the biggest change? A new pitch clock, hoping to reduce the length of games around the league if a player isn't ready by the time the clock expires, a ball or strike could be called on them automatically. San Diego Padres star third baseman Manny Machado was the first victim of this new change in the first inning of the club's spring opener against the Seattle Mariners Friday as he was charged with the automatic strike. But we saw how much this new rule was changed in the outcome of a game where the Boston Red Sox took on the Atlanta Braves Saturday. Braves prospect Cal Conley stepped into the box with a full count, two outs, and the bases loaded in a tie game during the ninth inning but was called for the auto strike, ultimately ending the game in a tie. Okay, going again. Five, four, three, two. That is a tough way to end a dream scenario for every ball player. With spring training acting as the preseason for baseball, two SoCal teams have already seen roster adjustments that will greatly impact this season and beyond. Los Angeles Dodgers shortstop Gavin Lux will miss the 2023 season after tearing his ACL in a game against the San Diego Padres Monday. This leaves the Dodgers in a tough predicament as they will have to roll with newly acquired infielder Miguel Rojas for the time being after losing Trey Turner to the Philadelphia Phillies this offseason. As for their NL West counterpart, the San Diego Padres extended star third baseman Manny Machado Tuesday to an 11-year contract worth $350 million. This comes after Machado announced earlier this winter that he would be opting out of his 10-year contract he signed in the 2019 offseason. The Padres are now set for the future with Machado at the helm alongside Fernando Tatis Jr. and Xander Bogarts, but it doesn't look like they're finished yet. 
As of now, they'll look to extend outfielder Juan Soto and potentially make a run at two-way superstar Shohei Otani this upcoming offseason. The Northern Lights made an appearance that made flights take neater loops. CNN has the latest. The Northern Lights were in rare, remarkable form recently as the cascading colors were enjoyed by folks all over the planet and beyond. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. First, take a look at the view in Alaska, where glimpses of the phenomena, which are produced by electromagnetic waves during geomagnetic storms, are less rare, but certainly no less breathtaking. Look at that. In the UK, the Grassholm Observatory shared a time-lapse video of the aurora a rolling across the sky, an event the observatory says is only visible a few times a year. An Air Baltic flight was treated to a vivid view high above the Baltic Sea, and they weren't the only flight to sight the lights. Images from at least two passenger flights went viral after the pilots made unscheduled mid-air loops in order to give folks on board plenty of chances to take in and take pics of the amazing views. But the money shot has to be from one Twitter user with a very enviable vantage point. Astronaut Josh Cassida shared this stunner from the International Space Station with a caption that read, absolutely unreal. Thank you for joining us tonight on OC News. Our next telecast comes to you in just a few minutes at 5 p.m. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Titan TV. From all of us here at OC News, have a great night.